I took all of the classic D&D races of elves, gnomes, dwarves, humans, and halflings, and I made them cool. <laughs> well, bless you. You're welcome. John, John Wick style cool. I made them John Wick style cool. So Brothers, I, I will give you two examples. So those are the five, and then I took five more, and I made them into player character races, and they were orcs, gnolls, ratmen, no, uh, uh, goblins, and kobolds. So I made those into player character races. And I'll tell you one of these, and I'll tell you one of these, and here's how it works. Um, halflings. I hate halflings. Really? Who halflings? likes halflings? Who likes halflings? I do. You're a loser! Go on. <laughs> Leave this room. So the reason I hate halflings is because they make no sense whatsoever. None. Especially Kinder. I have no idea why these races aren't extinct. Gone! Because they're small, helpless, innate, or, uh, 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 they're small, helpless. They garden. They can, yeah, they can, yeah, they cook. <laughs> That's why I kill them in Orc World. They have no standing army, right? They have, they don't know how to use weapons. Woo! We use, we use the slingshots. No. Why did the orcs come in and eat them all? Right? It, they make no sense, and uh, and they're annoying. Kender. Kender, does everybody know Kender are? Yeah. From, from Dragonlance? Tasselhoff? Kender, yeah. Tasselhoff Burfoot. Tasselhoff Burfoot is Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> he is. He's a sociopath. Explain Ken Tasselhoff Burfoot. He has no understanding of the consequences of his actions. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have understanding. That is the definition, the working definition of a sociopath. <clears throat> of Hannibal Lecter. He has no sense of his actions. <laughs> he has no sense of his actions. Why doesn't he kill and eat people? Why doesn't he? He has no sense of the consequences of his actions. He steals things that don't belong to him and go and has no sense that he's done anything wrong. He's kleptomaniac. Why doesn't someone murder this race? You got a whole bunch of evil, you got orcs, you got trolls, you got evil, you got, you know, evil big black dragons. Why don't they just get rid of the Kendra for us once and for all? So we don't have to worry that every time a Kendra comes walking by, I have to worry about my gold pouch. God, just die. There, I don't have to worry about my gold pouch anymore. He was going to steal it anyway. So, what we did with Kendra was this. We said, how, or what we did with halflings was this. We said, how would halflings survive? Running. No. no. So I thought about it. Halflings are really good at cooking. They're really good at cleaning. They're really good at gardening. They're a servant class. So halflings went into humans, and they make themselves indispensable. Every house has a halfling butler. Every house has a halfling cook. Every house has a halfling cleaner. And so halflings insert themselves into human culture and make themselves unreplaceable. What's more is that halflings have this amazing ability, which, which uh, um, hobbits do, which never comes up, that if a, half, if, if a halfling in Wicked Fantasy stands still for a certain amount of time, you stop noticing it. <laughs> and so here you have this halfling butler, and you're having dinner, and you're like, uh, Jeeves, and the halfling goes, what? yes, sir. <laughs> and he takes your dishes and all that stuff. So this is how halflings have become invaluable in human culture. But there's another part of it. There's another part of it. Because the only way to make halflings cool is to make them the coolest thing on the planet. And the coolest thing on the planet is James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> so we made all halflings James Bond. And what happens is that a halfling, when you, when you hire a halfling, he adopts you. He considers you his family. And he will do anything to protect you. That butler did it. <laughs> so, somebody breaks into your house in the middle of the night, and they're, you know, going through your silverware, and what? you really shouldn't do that. <laughs> and he says, this guy, this guy is a cook. Yeah, he's the cook. He's the cook, right? And, 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 and the guy goes, well, you're a halfling, and then the cook murders him. <laughs> and you wake up in the morning, and there's no broken glass, 
There's no blood on the carpet. No blobby. And there's no body. <laughs> you have no idea what happened. And if you cup and do it, you Jeeves. No. No, sir. Nothing happened. That's great, Jeeves. Thank you for your kind service. You're very welcome, sir. And so this is what halflings do in human culture. They're completely invisible. You never notice them. And they take care of you in every way. If your family is, is jeopardized by social, like, social danger... He shows up and goes, I hear you've been spreading rumors about my master's daughter. You should stop that. <laughs> if you're in financial trouble, he goes to the guy who owes you all money, and he goes, I hear that my lord owes you money. Not anymore. <laughs> and so that's halflings in Wicked Fantasy. They're all James Bond. So on the other side over here, we have all the, you know, the mean rough races, right? Let's talk about orcs, because orcs are cool. Yeah. Right? The guy, who's the guy who said, is that why I killed halflings in Orkville? Yeah. So the orcs, I wanted to make the orcs just like they are in D&D. They're an evil race created by evil gods to do evil things. Right? Because that's why all orcs are chaotic people. Actually, I have a quote. I lifted it directly from, from the Weasel List, which is an industry insider list. It was written by Ryan Dancy, the guy who was the R&D developer of D&D. Of, of, uh, of and he said, the reason the orcs are chaotic evil is so an eight-year-old girl can murder them wholesale without worrying about the moral implications. And I said, I'm writing Orc World, where the orcs are the heroes and the monsters of the men, the dwarves and elves are going to come and kill you and take your stuff. But orcs in, in, in uh, Wicked Fantasy are evil. They're evil because they were created by evil gods to do evil things. And they taught the orcs, if you eat your enemies, you will gain their strength. So orcs kill things, and then they eat it, because orcs are cannibals, right? And they eat it because it get, gets their strength. They eat your heart. And pretty soon, orcs figured out, you know what? The strongest thing in the world is the gods. Let's go eat them. <laughs> so they did. They would climb the mountain, and they killed their gods and ate them. And when they did, they gained free will. They don't have to be evil anymore, because they've killed their gods. Right? So the oh. whole idea behind orcs is that you have a dual you have a dual thing going on in your head. You have this evil bloodlust that makes you strong, and then you have free will that makes you free. What do you want? Do you want to be strong and a slave? Or do you want to be free? That's what's going on in every orc's head. Is this bloodlust that makes him strong and his will that makes him free. And those are the orcs in Wicked Fantasy. Um, and, and when I told Jill Fraser, who was designing all the mechanics for me, because I can't shoot half my hair, um, I, I asked, we were doing an interview, and I said, What do you like about orcs? And she said, They ate their gods! <laughs> I was like, Yes, that's my job. So, um, anyway, that's Wicked Fantasy. Um, the Kickstarter is only going for like. 48 more hours. We had a setting for 5,000. We've raised 38,000! And, uh, and if we hit 40,000, we're going to do a standalone, a standalone book, a Wicked Fantasy book using the Fate Engine from Evil Hat. So that's, we're, we're really close. How much do you have to pay to get the printed the, book? The printed book? If you, if you pledge $60, you get the printed book. You get the PDF. You get a soundtrack that was written for the game. A soundtrack, even even oh soundtrack. God. You also get you also get a copper, silver, and gold coin from the realm wow. of the reign of men. Not real copper, silver, and gold, oh. but they are. I mean, they're coins. You drop them, and they because I love your guys' coins. Let me just say that. Yeah, we don't have coins like this in the United States. You got wimpy ass quarters, uh, but you guys have coins. You, have you drop quarters. these silver quarters. You drop these like. That's a coin, right? <laughs> so we have uh, we have coins and we have a whole bunch of other stuff. So go check it out. And uh, but okay, now so sixty dollars is like the stashy shows what to. Actually, the yes, but dozens are. But for ten bucks, you get you get the PDF, you get the soundtrack, and you get a PDF of everything else we do. Oh, so you get the game master screen, you get the map, you get a whole bunch of stuff. Go check it out. And uh, John, can we fix like a? Mm, because uh, some Poland is not going to be in the game. No, 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 no. So koszty przesyłki jeszcze, ale można to obejść robiąc na przykład grupowe zamówienie. Więc jakby ktoś chciał, to można negocjować temat. Do you want? Do you want? Um, I mean, look. 
It's not so yeah, easy. Yes, as it yes, looks. Yes, it's not so easy as it looks. Yes. So, Cut the meat. Yeah. This is a recipe for cherry pork chops. Because I like cherry. And there's a true. Let's tell them true reason. Well, I've already done orange pork chops, so we're gonna do one. Uh, and we are filming in Poland. Uh, yes. Get a shot of them. I'm real weak. You're not real weak. <laughs> God damn no. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. I'm in Poland. No. <laughs> Doing cherry pork chops live in front of a studio audience. Oh! And this is cooking for gamers. Cooking for gamers, Poland style. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Right. Well, I don't understand what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so first, now, like I said, cooking for gamers is uh, recipes that are cheap, easy, and feed a lot of people. This is usually a lot more people that I have over for my game. Usually about five, but we'll see how many we can get to you guys, we'll, we'll see. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the pork chops really thin, thin pork chops. Um, first thing to do is gonna go out and get pork. I, you all know what pork is, I'm told that pork is the national meat. So uh, I, We're the pork country. You're the pork country. <laughs> 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 all right. So, what we're gonna do? What is this? Is all in Polish? Okay. A extra virgin olio di oliva. Okay. You're gonna get yourself a frying pan. Any frying pan will do. And you put it down here, and you open up the oil, and you put in just a little bit of oil. And what I mean by just a little bit is like a dollop. You put in just a little bit, so it's only like that much, and then you roll it around. If I had a paper towel, I could. I didn't think about that. Sorry. Well, that's okay. I didn't. I think didn't about think about that either. I so have you, a half of a roll of a paper towel. Just See? half a roll of a paper towel. Paper towel. That is not a roll. <laughs> <laughs> it's a half of a roll. But make sure that the bottom of the pan has enough oil on it, and just a little bit of oil. You don't need a lot. You want to heat it or not? Uh, yeah. Let's, so you let's heat it. Look here. You start like this, then you turn it on. Okay. Here you make menu. 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 He's Mine going to operate my oven for me. Okay. <laughs> I'm the oven guy. You're the oven lady. Oh, you know what I should do while we're, while we're doing this? I should tell you what you need for the recipe. <laughs> First, you need pork. Hey, pork. pork. Feed everybody. Next, you need olive oil. Listen to this. Jump, jump. Yeah, pork. <laughs> you need olive oil. You need um, cherry juice. We have cherry juice. It's and hot, you no. need brown sugar. We have brown sugar. You need cherry marmalade. Or cherry uh, jam. jam. Cherry jam. And uh, you also need a tablespoon of vinegar. Ocet! Wyżeczka oceta! Ten jest jabłkowy. So, nice the, nice so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our pork chops. Well, that's a lot of pork chops. We're going to take pork chops and we're going to put them in the oil. 19 degrees. Okay. One more. That's about good. We're going to put them in the oil and we're going to brown the pork chops. Now, for the, I'm going to talk like nobody knows what I'm talking about. So if, I, if I, I don't mean to condescend, I don't mean to talk down to you, I'm just going to assume you have no idea how to cook. Um, is that fair? No. Yeah. <laughs> So browning meat, what this means is you're gonna put it on the oil just long enough and make sure that it, the, the pot is not too hot. Because if it's too hot, you will burn the meat right away. You don't wanna do that. What you wanna do is brown the meat. And what that means is, you see the difference between these two? Yeah. This, oh, let me, let me do this. Yeah. You see the difference between these two? This one is browned on one side and this one is not. This one is still pink. So what you want to do, and this one is almost brown. You see that? It's white. It's well, it's white. Yeah, because it's pork. <laughs> Eat it. So you're not having dinner tonight. <laughs> Don't argue with the father. <laughs> the father says it's brown. It's brown. So let's take this one too. Do we have a do we have one a, too? Yeah, do we have a cover for that one? Uh, no, we don't. Okay, we can make one. Yes, we can try to use the... Well, please use a plate, all right? Yes, plate is... Plate is not nice, it's, it's too small. Well, we'll, we'll improvise. We'll improvise and adapt and overcome. We're United States Marines. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm not. Also 60 degrees? Yeah. Oh, you have to put it. Because <coughs> it's very And we're cooking! Sticky. We're cooking with grapes! Yay! Yay! John, John, my mother used to add salt on the row chops. Yes, we're going to add salt. Oh, yeah, now on, uh, on do the row now. one. Do it, do it that way. Okay. What about the the brown, the, the, the sugar? Or uh, yeah, not the, sugar. This uh, stuff. Uh, yes. I don't know what it is. It's pepper. pepper. Oh, it's pepper. So we're going to take salt. <laughs> So we're going to take salt and pepper and we're going to put them on the pork chops to what you like. <laughs> Someone likes salt. I'm, I've never skipped cooking in my life, John. I, I noticed. <laughs> I'm skinny. Because I don't eat, because I don't cook. Because you live in a poor country. <laughs> no, I live in Poland. Oh, okay. In poor country. He lives in um, where? No, 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 no. They are filming us. No, no, jo no L jokes. No L jokes. Okay. <laughs> oh. that? Yeah. And put them on there too. Uh -huh. All right. So this doesn't take a long time to to brown the meat. You just need to put it on there for like a minute or two, and that will brown the outside of the meat. So it doesn't take long at all. For instance. Uh, this one is already browned all the way through. You can see it, or it's already browned. But that's okay. And we're just gonna keep doing this. Look how easy this is. Cooking is easy. Well, some cooking is easy. Yeah? Oh! In the meantime, have you seen Blood and Honor? <laughs> Blood and Honor is a samurai role-playing game written by some hack from the United States. <laughs> I don't know who he is, but he thinks he's John Wick. Um, and it's for sale. Yeah. And look how beautiful and it is. He did the addition yeah. of the Polish. Yeah. Nie wiem czy ale wy to tak dało, Honor Krew. Krew i Honor. Krew i Honor. Macie się to maczył? Nie prawda? Mamy jeszcze trzy tutaj do zrobienia. A Mateusz, Mateusz robił korektę. Do you want yeah. to make it uh, no. no. okay. yeah. will sign it, John. What? You will sign it. I will sign it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you already did. You have a halfling, don't you? <laughs> you will sign this book, Mr. Wick. <laughs> I actually, John, you brought a couple of your games with you. Get that. You try to maybe buy another game, John, because he brought some of the books. John brought the Edges Project. That is a game on Mecha. I know what that means. Yeah, I've heard a word. I understand. He brought some big book of little games. That is 10 yen in one one book. What is it? Oh, Crafty uh, Honor version English. Is it limited edition or? Yeah, I have both the standard edition, which is in black and white, and I have the special edition, which is in full color. And half cover. And um, <laughs> half cover. Hard cover. Yeah. Okay. You try and join us now. For your session, spot card is John. Let's see. Na pewno nie jest jedynie od zaopatrzyć. Te nie są mi te gry. What John? What are you doing? I am flipping these things because I want to make enough room for everybody because I want everybody to get a bite at least. And uh, there we go. And then we're going to put the rest of them in. This is a lot of pork. And the best part is most of the cooking, you don't have to do anything. But we'll talk about that in a moment. Who's your favorite game designer? Steve Jackson! <laughs> Who feeds you? Yeah, which game designer feeds you? That's a good question. Ah, ah. Alright. Ron Edwards. Go. <laughs> Ron won't feed you. He'll just tell you that you cause brain damage. No, you're okay. It's not you. You're okay. Yeah, games cause brain damage. Alright. So while these are cooking... Uh, we're gonna have to wait on that because I want to get them brown. Um, the best part about this recipe is that once all the browning is done, 
We're going to add all the rest of the recipes. We're going to put a cover on it. We're going to let it sit. And it's going to sit for about a half an hour. And in the meantime, I will continue to answer questions for you and entertain Yay! you. Yay! Um, so why don't, you, why don't you take this over and make sure everything is brown. Okay. We can even take things out if they're cooked and then put yeah, them back okay. in. Okay, all right, no problem. All right, so while well, Magic, by the way, this guy's na nickname is now Magic. <laughs> Yeah. 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 No? Okay. Oh, the other one. <laughs> yeah, that, no. The oven guy. The oven lady. The oven lady. <laughs> the oven lady. <laughs> You're a good sport. Okay, so while they're doing all the all the hard work, why don't we all the easy one? Who else has a question? Uh, you have a question. Cherry. It's the throw off? And with all, all of the publications. Did you like it? You love it? Then what does it matter what I think? Because I am interested in one of your Because we have played a canonical game. Yeah. Take Warhammer and make it the game you want. It's the same thing. No, it's not. If you want the elves in Warhammer to be different, make them different. You bought the damn book. You can do what you want with it. It's your book. You paid me money for it. If you want to get rid of something out of Warhammer, get rid of it. It's your money. You pay for it. It's your time. You take time out of your week as a game master, as a player, to prep the game, to buy the game. You hand me money. I give you the book. You come up with adventures. You come up with NPCs that your players are going to ignore. What's that? You guys ready? Yeah, it's brown. It's brown. Okay, good. Turn the heat down. It's your game. Play it the way you want. Screw Games Workshop. I don't, they don't care about you. Why should you care about them? When's the last time Games Workshop cared about you? I mean, if the game makes sense from start to finish. Then play it that way. There's things in Games Workshop I would take, uh, in Warhammer I'd take right out. Like, the whole system. <laughs> I'm a hero! I have a 25% chance of hitting you! <coughs> I died? <laughs> this is fun! <laughs> oh wait! I can spend my only fate point! <laughs> oh wait! Somebody else hit me and I died? <laughs> this is fun! <laughs> Let's move on. Now we're going to add cherry juice. Now, we have a lot of pork, so I'm going to... Where's my phone? Um, the recipe actually calls for... Da, 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 and I'll post this later so you guys can get the actual stuff. Um, it's two pounds of meat? Yeah. Okay. In that case, we usually do one pound of meat, so I'm going to double everything in the recipe. Um, this counts for... Super size! Um, this is a half cup of orange juice, and this is... Oh, it's a cup. In, uh... We don't do your metric system in America. <laughs> we like our screwed up sixteenths. We're very happy with them. It's two cups. This is two cups? Yeah, okay, so we'll do, we'll do half of one in here. It's a glass. It's more than one glass. One and a half glass. That's a little bit more. And then we will do this one here. Okay. Then, what we're going to do is we're going to combine... Uh, <laughs> um, we're going to pour in a little bit of vinegar. And this is called what? Oh, you guys like Swedish Meal Time? You guys ever seen Swedish Meal Time? Yeah. You should see Swedish Meal Time. Regular, ordinary Swedish Meal Time in Swinglish. So we're gonna add a little bit of vinegar. Yay! I like vinegar, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. But you know, cherry cherries are more zesty than than. The yeah, this is uh, this is uh, apple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this will good with the cherry. This is good. It's very healthy. And then we're gonna take the secret ingredient: <laughs> brown, brown sugar. sugar. Don't burn it. It's bad for your health. Don't smoke it. So we're gonna take brown sugar. <laughs> Now this says um, two <laughs> tablespoons of brown sugar. So we're gonna. <clears throat> I 
And then we're going to take the brown sugar over here. I'm going to make a complete mess. Because cooking is about making a mess. And if that ain't fun enough for you, I don't know what's Yay! <laughs> yeah, you're doing the wrong thing. So then I'm going to mix it up a little bit. We should have mixed this in a bowl and then poured it over everything. But that's fine. we got plenty of juice in here. Lot yeah. about the jam. And then we're going to take the jam. Yeah, bring the jam. The cherry jam. Cherry jam. And this is what's really going to make it... Ooh. Okay, now we're going to take some of the jam. It's another two tablespoons, so we're going to put this in there. Yay, jam! No, oh yeah, this is going to be the good stuff. There we go. And we're going to mix this up. I am making a real mess. I hope somebody has paper towels. Oh, there's real cherries in here. Awesome. <laughs> I am in Poland. We use vegetables for our vegetables. Oh yeah, we do. But... <laughs> John, <laughs> we actually use vegetables for our vegetables. What are veg vegetables? Are what food eats? <laughs> vegetables are not food. Vegetables are what food eats. Well, but our food eats real vegetables. Okay, there we go. So, I'll tell you what, let's put a little bit more in there, because, well, there's a lot of meat. Soil and green is people. No, it's not. Soil and green is a movie. No one, no one. I understand what you yeah, said. Because I'm old. old. Look at the beard. I'm old. <laughs> okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cover this up, and we're going to uh, cover it up for 35 minutes. Uh, for 25 minutes. For 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough. These are cooked really well, so I'm gonna turn it down to simmer. And can we cover this up with yeah, something? Yeah, we can try. Bring it like this. I don't think that'll. No, 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 it's too no, no, small. No, no. Just burn like. Use a spoon. Use a spoon to cover. Maybe you can put everything yes. in one. Like that. Which can no, 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 that math is a conspiracy to lead us away from God. <laughs> so. Oh. Oh, yeah, we'll use the board. Maybe the big one. This one. We'll use this one. Okay. Now, this is going to cook for about 25 minutes, and then hopefully, I'm going to have at least one piece for everybody. I hope. Man. We do. Another chance. Oh, okay. <laughs> Another chance. <laughs> You're gonna be a Jesus. You're gonna All right. make the pork chips, you know. So, Jericho anyway, line. anybody got any more questions? Even I don't believe there is such a thing as a generic role-playing game. GURPS is neither generic nor universal. And it's not a role-playing game. Let me ask you a question. What is... Legend of the Five. Are you like? What's your favorite role-playing game? <laughs> Warhammer. Warhammer. Oh. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite role-playing game? Let's ask someone else. What's your favorite role-playing game? Uh, well, Warhammer. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good choice. Um, okay. Your, your favorite role-playing game is what? Paranoia. Paranoia. That's a good game. Um, what is paranoia about? It's about paranoia, right? It's about not knowing, you know, anything that's going on. How does the game do that? It makes you paranoid. It has mechanics that you don't know what's going to happen, right? You have no idea what's going to happen at any time, right? And the behaviors that that game rewards are, it rewards you for being paranoid, right? Okay. Um, what is D&D about? D&D is about killing people who don't look like you and taking their stuff. Yes. How does it do that? It does that by having rules for killing people, and how does it reward you? By taking their stuff. Um, so games are about things, and then they, they you know, what is, what is Legend of the Five Rings about? Legend of the Five Rings is about the definition of honor. And how does it do that? Each clan has a different definition of honor, and they're all right. And the behaviors it rewards, it rewards you for acting like a samurai. 
according to your clan. Right? Um, so, so that's very focused. It, it's, it's not... So to illustrate the point, what is GURPS about? Stop. Uh, it's about I, making a character. And rolling dice. How, what, and rolling dice. And, well, it's about making a character. What is... Uh, uh, okay, how does it do that? It has a really <laughs> intricate system for making a character. What behaviors does it reward? It rewards you for tweaking your character. Okay. John? That's, yep. That's not, mm -hmm. Yeah. The last question from a lady. Or if there's no lady asking any questions, we have to proceed to the parents from. I have a question. Okay, last uh, question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Gender uh, equality. Can you tell me something about the goblins in your new RPG? The goblins? Yes. Okay. I love goblins. It's story time. I love goblins. Oh. And I love it's good because I like goblins too. Story it's story time, time with John. Yay! <laughs> Once upon a time, when the world was not yet made, the gods looked down and said, let us make a thing. And each of the gods said, I will make a thing that will be better than all the rest. Do I have to start over? No. Okay. <laughs> I will make a thing that is better than all the rest. And so each of the gods decided that they would make a thing. And so the, god of the gods of the men went over here, and the gods of the elves went over here, and, and all of the gods went away. And the gods of goblins went, is there something going on? <laughs> nobody told me, because nobody tells the goblins anything. <laughs> and then they came back, and the god of men said, I have made men, and they are noble and free. That is the gift I have given you. And the god of the elves said, I have made elves beautiful and noble, and that is the gift I have given them. And one by one, each of the gods introduced the thing that he made. The god of the dwarves said, I made them stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> and so each of, each of the peoples got a gift. And then they all looked at the goblin and said, what did you make? And what gift did you give your people? And by the time they got to the goblin, all the good gifts had been taken up. There were no more gifts. There were no more blessings. And so the god of the goblins said, I have a blessing. I will give my people this. And all the other gods shook with fear. Because the god of the goblins gave them the world's worst blessing. He gave them bad luck. <laughs> They can throw it. <laughs> so the goblins in Wicked Fantasy are uh, are kind of like gypsies, and that they wander around in little families, and they have caravans. You guys want to cut those up and start? Maybe we can. Because they're ready. They're ready. So um, they travel around the caravans. So when you make a goblin character, part of making your character is making your caravan. So you have a whole bunch of little children who run out and get things for you. You have a wife or a husband who takes care of the kids. And goblins have bad luck. And what that means is, if you kill a goblin, let's just say the last guy who killed a goblin went home, found out his wife had left him with their kids, he contracted VD, he lost his arm, he fell out of a window and broke his back, and then the bad luck started. <laughs> <laughs> So goblins have bad luck, and the best thing about goblins is, no one's really sure if it's real. It just kind of happens. <laughs> um, goblins have, and, and so goblins have a stat, which is called Boak, bad luck, because goblins can't pronounce the letter L. So goblins have Boak, and what they do is, hey, I got something for you. Here, where's this? Ah, is this? This is that. I don't like this. I got this. So, I play goblin. Goblins pronounce their, their name as people goblins. Yeah, like you. Because they are like a you. Ah, you come to Canada, and I see you, and I say, you, you. 
I look at you with big eye. <laughs> you got curse. No. Yes, yes, you got curse. It's bad curse. Very bad curse. You need this. This help you. I, I give you this. You don't tell anyone else. I give you this. this and as soon as I'm about to give it to you, my wife comes out. What you do? What you do? I, I give she got bad curse. I give her this. You give for free? I got 16 kids! <laughs> I feed kids! What you do? Oh, she needs this bad curse. This really bad curse. She paid for that! You don't give it away! It, um, um, she paid five gold for it. No, she paid ten! No, uh, six! Six! No, she paid nine! Um, uh, seven! Seven! Seven and a half! Okay, here's seven and a half. <laughs> because the character class that comes with goblins, because each of the races has its own character classes, so it's not just fighters and thieves and things like that. By the way, everybody who plays Pathfinder, they're not goddamn rogues, they're thieves. A rogue is a sissy wannabe French version of a thief. <laughs> a rogue! I'm a rogue! I promise! <laughs> So the goblin merchant, which is the goblin character class, all of his class abilities are con games. And as he becomes a better merchant, he learns more cons. And the more cons he learns, the more things he can do. Now Jill, Jill Frazier, is who I'm designing with fantasy with, and she is a big fan of Pathfinder, because Jill is a math person, so she loves the math. And she told me, John, how is this going to help you in cons? Because Pathfinder is about fighting. And I said, well, um, my two favorite con men are Penn and Teller. Everybody know who Penn and Teller are? They're magicians. And Penn and Teller, if you go home, Google Penn and Teller Seven Principles of Magic. They have a routine called the Seven Principles of Magic. And what happens is that he gets the Seven Principles of Magic. Principles of Magic are things like ditch. I am holding an object and now I'm not. It's somewhere else. And then it's, you know, and, and they go through all these seven principles. And one of the things they get is switch, which is I have an object in my hand, in this hand, but I want it to be in this hand, so I do this. And now it's in this hand, you don't notice, right? That's what magicians do. So for example, the Goblin Merchant has a, has a class ability called switch. And what it is, is you're a fighter and you have a sword. And she's a magic user and you're about to attack her. And I'm within reach of you, and I'm a goblin, and I do switch. Your sword is now in my hand, and you have the team. <laughs> I switch. Now I have. <laughs> so, that's because goblins, almost all the goblin powers, do no damage. Because they're goblins. <laughs> they're adorable. <laughs> and um, uh, so, but all their powers, the powers, all their cons, help other people in the group yes. and essentially make you awesome. Which is what, in Nuts and Bolts, what Wicked Fantasy is. All of the races make everybody else awesome. Because games like PG and Pathfinder and Dungeon World and that, they're about a team. You play a group, most role playing games are what you play a group of people. So, when Jill and I built with Fantasy, we said, how are we going to improve? encourage people to make a team that make, and the way we do it is that every character class makes somebody else awesome. The Hathen Butler, he's your guard. He's attached to you. And he can go out and do the stuff that he wants, but he can't do it without you. Dear Joel, I have a gift for you. Oh, excellent. All right. Um, we have, oh wow, we might have enough for everybody. Yes. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's what goblins are like, and, and if you'd like, I have a really great picture. But, um, so, this, I'm, just, I'm going to try this. Make sure this doesn't suck. Oh, that doesn't suck. <laughs> okay. Let's take a look at the prize, make sure. So anyway, um, this is cherry pork chops. 
Um, it looks like we might have enough for everybody. Um, if you'd like to come up and get some. Um, or should I just go around the Canada? I'll go around, go around here. Around here. Come on. You are the cook. I am the cook. <laughs> we so, are the fairies. Um, 40 minutes to make and it feeds about 5 gamers. If you put this on... Oh, 100 Polacks. And 100 Polacks. <laughs> <laughs> If you put it on mashed potatoes, the mashed potatoes takes up the sauce really, really good. It makes a really nice gravy for the mashed potatoes or for rice. So, um, let's start. You want some or you want to go over this? Oh, why not? Let's start over here. 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 Let's start and you guys are up front. Here, take one and pass it down. Take one. Take the fight. All right, here we go. What I'm going to do, I know you guys. You're one of my favorites. I hope there's. Uh, we still have. Oh, we got plenty more. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to pass this over here for you guys. You guys can have And then... Our time is ended. And our time is ended, so... I'm going to bring this back here. You know what? There's a Cthulhu person back here. A Cthulhu person is priority. Słuchajcie, John będzie teraz miał dla Was e, pół godzinki na podpisywanie autografów, e, a potem who haven't I Raise your hand. Over there? Okay. Uh, Raise your hand if you want one. You can see it. 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 Anybody else has a pad that we have to try? Alright, so then I don't think it's much. Anybody else has a walk with the walk? Hasn't gotten one. You! Stop that! <laughs> Anybody else hasn't gotten one that wants one? Okay, the rest for me. Get out of the ground. Have you got a sense out of when you put on the ground? No, no. 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 Gdzie jest biały talerz?